Thank you for joining Hybrid Remote Center of Excellence. I'm Nola Simon. I'm your host, but this is the podcast that used to be known as the Janus Oasis. Today, I want to actually talk about uh, future forecasting and future scenarios. So I am a member of Urgent Optimist, which is a community that's created by Jay McGonigal and the Institute for the Future. And one of the things that I've learned from Institute of the Future is how to actually run scenarios. Future scenarios are really a style of gaming where you're actually imagining what it would be like to wake up in a future scenario 10 years in the future. So you wake up and that future, that scenario is real. So what does your morning look like? What does it feel like? What do you wear? What do you eat? Who do you interact with? What conversations happen? What technology are you using? What's the same? What's different? What do you miss? What are you looking forward to? And really, where do the things that you imagine make you uncomfortable? So it was really interesting pre-pandemic, actually significantly pre-pandemic, I think it was about 2012-ish, Jane McGonigal actually ran a scenario for World Bank where they actually did a scenario about a pandemic. And what was fascinating about that is when the pandemic initially did happen, they went back and looked at the data and the reaction and they interviewed people who had actually participated in the scenario. And they were able to advise governments, different organizations on what the results of that scenario really were. Early on, for example, from the feedback in that scenario, they knew that Rituals were going to be challenging for people to avoid in person. Funerals and weddings are things, and going to church every week are rituals that are embedded into people's lives that people really value. And so that was something that the scenario themselves, the original scenario, really taught and, and informed how people react with the pandemic. People who had already participated in this in the scenario knew that those events church and funerals and weddings, those were actually going to be super spreader. And that's where they knew they could think through that. And it, it wasn't as challenging for them because they'd already felt what it was going to feel like because they'd imagined the scenario and masking with what they knew that people were going to react really differently to masking. And some people would really comply and see the understanding of it and other people would rebel. And so that was another thing that came out of the original scenario. And what this really shows is that if you're looking at future trends, right? So for example, if you're looking at the future of work right now, you could really pull it together you know, based on flexibility at work. Is it a four-day week or is it more realistic that it's going to be a three-day week 10, day, 10 years in the future? How does your job change what type of work are you actually doing? What kind of experience is it? Where are you working? When are you working? Where do you live? Is there an office? And really, what does it feel? And how does it embed in your life? Because work is not necessarily just what you do, but it's how it's incorporated into your actual daily life. And if you're looking at the trends that are informing what's happening in the world, you're also factoring climate change. If you've got floods and fires and tsunamis and all of this increased weather activity that is really damaging property in coastal areas, if the the melting of the polar ice really continues, the levels, the sea levels are going to really rise. So does that mean anything that's coastal, are those people going to be able to live and work in those areas or is there going to have to be migration because of climate change? How does that inform work? How does that inform how people live? Where are the safe areas in the world? And are you going to be one of those migrants? Or are you going to be one of the people who actually has to welcome the migrants? And how does that shape work? The longevity. So it used to be that people counted on the fact that they would retire sometime between age 60 and 65. Well, if you're living to 100, which realistically you could, how do you fund that? Has anybody planned for what that looks like in terms of expense? Well, the majority of people, because they didn't anticipate that they would live that. 
So there's been a real shift in terms of how long we have to work because there's a reality in how we afford it. So it may be that we're not going to retire in our 60s. We're going to have to work until we're 75 or 80. And what type of work does that look like? You're probably not going to want to do five days a week, to five, two hours away in a commute if you're 75 years old. So is there an opportunity to do role sharing? Is there an opportunity to work remotely? Say, for example, you want the lifestyle that came with being retired, but you're okay working three days a week, but you want to do that from the Caribbean. Assuming climate change has an impact of that. What does that look in terms of longevity? And the other aspect is people aren't necessarily having as many kids. So the population is going to be impacted because what does work look like if there's nobody new to take on the extra work? How do we delegate? How do we distribute? How do we reimagine what that work should be? So these are all themes and trends that you could weave into a scenario to help people imagine what it would be like to wake up in that scenario 10 years in the future. And so I'm going to be doing when my community for the the membership for the Hybrid Remote Center of Excellence opens next week with invention of cultural software by many networks. I'm going to be doing a future scenario in for December to see what we can learn about what the future of work feels. And so I'm going to encourage you to, to join and play the game with me. What you can imagine, you can understand and you can prepare for. And that's really what Jane's scenario with the, the World Bank demonstrated is people who participated in that scenario weren't as shocked by the pandemic as people who had no idea and had never thought about what that would feel like. They weren't as prepared. They they reacted differently and it was far more stressful for people who had never considered it. So anyways, I just wanted to leave you with that. This is just a resource that I can add into the Center of Excellence. So I wanted to record, and of course, scenarios can be done on any topic. And if you want to join Urgent Optimist, I'll actually put a link in the, the comments as well, too. And you can use my uh, referral link and become a member because it's excellent training if you're interested at all in, about futures thinking and how to do this type of work. So anyways, thanks for joining.